San Diego, a weather paradise, and Petco, a veritable baseball garden of Eden. Game two with the Pirates tonight, Everett Cabrera. Padres leadoff man on base three times last night, a key RBI double against the Pirates. And for Pittsburgh, a chance to see again the reigning most valuable player in the National League a year ago, Andrew McCutcheon. In June, he leads every major league hitter with most hits. Yes, sir. Game two, three-game series. It's the San Diego Padres hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. And good evening, everyone. A happy Tuesday to you with Mark Grant, Dick Kemberg. It's always exciting when you're able to talk about a young man making his major league debut. I'm so excited for Jesse Hahn. I'm sure he is, too. Why? Not one day in AAA, straight from AA, the young right-hander who's 24 years old, going through his routine, which makes him prepared to pitch in this big league ball game and at San Antonio the nice numbers two and one record the ERA 2.2 and you know what he's going to find out quickly that it's different than double a these big league hitters they'll turn around the fastball so the question tonight is this a couple of them how deep will Jesse Han go in tonight's ball game and secondly will he be able to command that fastball to get these big league hitters out and he goes against a man even younger than he, 23-year-old Garrett Cole, former UCLA All-America. He's 5-3 and three this year, and he throws flames. And this is a kid that you can build a rotation around, the fast track to the big leagues, and paying dividends ever since he's been there. A nice ERA under th under 4 at 3.8, but he's got a power arm. He's got a power slider and a changeup as well, a curveball once in a while. So Garrett Cole, he's fun to watch. This should be a good matchup tonight. Well, we know that the Pirates bring in the good bats. Their number 8 hitter went 4-4 four for four last night. They're tough. This Bucko lineup really has a lot of diversity. They've got some pop. They've got guys who can get on base. But one of the reasons why I think the Pirates have done so well since May 1st, second in batting average, first in on base, tied for first with hits, I think it starts at the top of the order with Josh Harrison filling in for Tabata. His on-base percentage up above 330. Neil Walker batting second. And then you've got Andrew McCutcheon, right? So when you've got Andrew McCutcheon hitting third, those two hitters are going to get some good pitches. That's why I think that's the spark of this Pittsburgh Pirate lineup. Well, Buddy Black uh, strapped last night. He had to go to his bullpen, bullpen seven times. So it is exhausted. you got to make a change. you got to bring up fresh arms. And one of those tonight is a veteran call-up. We'll meet him with Chris Button when we return to Petco Park.
Welcome back to San Diego. As Dick was saying, a lot of pitches, a lot of innings yesterday, so they had to make some room for some fresh faces. The Padres announcing some transactions today, and let's get to him. Jesse Hahn has been call- recalled from Double A. He'll start today on the mound. Left-handed pitcher Jason Lane. The Padres purchased his contract from El Paso, so to make room, Don Roach has been optioned to Triple A, and Eric Stoltz is on bereavement for the next few days. Getting back to Lane, he's had quite the journey in his 15-year professional career, moving from a position player to now a pitcher and this will be Lane's first stint in the bigs as a pitcher. Here's more on the 37 year old's journey. Man, it's uh, it's been it's been a grind but it's been uh, well worth it to get back to this point and uh, I'm pretty excited. It's a it's a totally different feel than the first time and uh, I want to say it means a little bit more this time I think. There's always that fire in there, and, and I just I just love playing on both sides. And, and, you know, being in the National League as a pitcher, I still was uh, able to help the team out offensively and, and pinch hits in games I started um, getting to hit, and I, I just love playing. That's your Geico quote of the game. What a great story from Lane. Well, can the Padres cool off the Bucks bats? It'll be in the hands of Jesse Hahn. We've got first pitch coming up between the Pirates and the Padres on Fox Sports San Diego. the combination uh, last night of Charlie Morton's arm and a 16 hit attack by the Pirates a 10 3 victory game one game two of the three game series a beautiful night here in downtown San Diego as the Padres take the field Pirates 27 and 30 on the season the Chargers 26 and 32 and here's the starting lineup brought to you by mattress discounters Josh Harrison will lead it off he's been a fine leadoff hitter for the Bucks Neil Walker one of the best hitting second baseman in all the baseball, Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, much uh, said about him, all deserved. Dyke Davis, the cleanup man. Russell Martin behind the plate, bats fifth. Pedro Alvarez, the home run hitter, he's got 10. Travis Snyder, we saw him last night as a pinch hitter, del- delivered a base hit. Jordy Mercer on base five times last night, four base hits. And Garrett Cole, a good hitting pitcher on the mound. And you get one chance for a first impression. Jesse Hahn is going to grab the rock and make his major league debut. Straight jump from double A. He throws the fastball, the slider, curveball, and the changeup. Rare use of that slider. 
his fastball range is anywhere from 90 to 95 but he'll live around 92 maybe 93. Let's see if he can locate that pitch tonight. He was drafted four years ago out of Virginia Tech and required Tommy John immediately. Behind Han tonight the, the Padre defense brought to you by the Aramco group Smith and left Maven starts tonight in center with Venable and right. Headley Cabrera Jerko and Alonzo the usual infield alignment with Rene Rivera behind the plate so the veteran there to handle Jesse Hahn. We'll see how his nerves are going to wear here early on. He's a big man 6'5 and 190 from Groton Connecticut and as we said Virginia Tech and uh, did not pitch in 2010 after he's drafted by Tampa Bay in the sixth round missed all of 2011 with Tommy John. You know what I'm hoping for Dick strike one first pitch in the big leagues a strike right down the middle get that first pitch under your belt take it from there I've always felt the first pitch the first out are the ones that you really want to get out of the way and then you can concentrate on uh, going deep into the ball game. on a broader scope the man we just saw in the dugout would like to see five innings exactly. after last night wore a path to the mound as uh, Tim Stalker out unable to get through the third inning and Required Torres, Quackenbush, Thayer, Vincent, Roach, and Patton to work. Alan Porter will call the balls and strikes tonight. The rest of the crew, Joe West, Rob Drake, and Seth Buckminster. And we're underway. The first pitch is not a strike. To the left fielder, Josh Harrison. Harrison on a six-game hitting streak. Up high again, 2-0. 93 on the fastball. Red Black likes the fact that Han has the height and is a pitcher downhill. Mm -hmm. And he gets a strike there, two and one. He goes from the extreme first base side. He's going with the high pants, the all blue socks. Strike two. 95 on that pitch. He's got good arm swing. Nice out of the glove. Long stride from Han. And we saw him in spring training. We liked him. Saw a fly ball back of second. Jerko drifts out and makes the play. And here comes second baseman Neil Walker. And Walker had a big night last night. Three hits. Three RBIs. He leads the team now and runs batted in 32. That's uh, pretty good total for a man hitting second in the order. And 10 home runs tied with Pedro Alvarez. I would think he'd get some all star votes in the balloting. Tough with runners in scoring position. We saw that last night. And he leads all National League second basemen in home runs and all Major League second basemen in RBIs. That ought to get you a vote or two. Sure it would. Well, he fell behind Harrison, got him to pop up. Now 2-0 to Walker. That's in there. Well, got pretty good movement on that two seam action on that fastball there at 93. If he stays down there, he could create a, a lot of ground balls for Jesse Hahn. His dad, a big Pittsburgh fan, so naturally, like father, like son, he grew up uh, following the Pirates. And uh, of course, Roberto Clemente is a family name in the Hahn household. Hey, bring your glove and make a play. And then hand it off to. That young smiling fan. That's great. Everybody in the family is bringing their glove to the ball yard. Oop, inside almost Nick Walker. When Han heard the news from the El Paso manager Rich Dower, he said, "Better bring your haircutting equipment." What do you mean? Up to San Diego. He's uh, he's the barber. <laughs> Get a free cut. Yeah, he was cutting some heads in spring training, wasn't yeah, he? That's right. Yeah, over in Peoria. Protective swing, and Walker still alive, three and two. Andrew McCutcheon on deck. Well, tomorrow a day game, folks, and uh, 
Should be a beautiful sunshiny day. Some of the kids out of school bring them out see a ball game out. I Ian Kennedy against Francisco Liriano the matchup. Good pitching matchup. Three and two again. Broken bat one hopper to Cabrera. Two away. And right now we're going to look at the keys to the game with Mark Grant brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Thank you very much Mr. Enberg get on the coal heater Garrett Cole he's got the good fastball he's waiting to go out there in the bottom half. So if the Padres can turn down around get some base runners see what they can do and Hans got to keep them close. Keep those Pirates close hey, if he gets the lead it would be nice to give him some breathing room as well early. And like you said Dick hopefully he can go five maybe into the sixth inning. And big if he can get out of this first inning facing three tough hitters. Mm -hmm. Unscathed. Here's McCutcheon. One hit last night. His last time up, he doubled to right center. He is a June hitter in the last three plus years in June. Hitting 346. First two pitches, he's gone soft on him. First pitch changeup, second pitch curveball. Highest averages since 2011. Trout, Miggy Cabrera, Posey, and McCutcheon, and David Wright. How about that company? Oh, no June gloom there, huh? Mm. <laughs> Fastball buried into the glove of Rivera. Two and one. So he fell behind all three hitters, two and oh. Rallied to get Harrison and Walker. That's yeah. a great located fastball, isn't it? Nice and smooth, huh? How I many like O's? It. Three, four, five, six O's. Six O's. And there's the proof right there. <laughs> Getting up on top, hitting that outside corner. That is a well located fastball. Struck him out. That's a great first inning debut. Major League pitcher, Jesse Hahn. One, two, three. Brought to you by Buick. This is your local Buick dealer or go to Buick.com. By Petco, the power of together. By your San Diego Lexus dealer. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. So young Jesse Hahn retires the Pirates in order in his first inning of Major League pitching. And now let's go to the Padre lineup brought to you by Toyota. Cabrera with Headley again in the second slot. Seth Smith will hit third. Yonder Alonso cleanup. Then Jed Jerko. Will Venable in the sixth slot. Cameron Maben hitting over 300. Bat seventh. Then Rene Rivera and Jesse Hahn. Cabrera starts at 248 and. Garrett Cole, he's 6'4 and a stocky 240. He's from Newport Beach, went to high school in Orange County, and a collegiate at UCLA. He was a high pick out of high school and elected not to take the money. He wanted to go to UCLA. 
Well, right out of the gate, Dick, 96 on the fastball. It looked like he just kind of let up and just exactly <laughs> using that big frame of his. Four seamers, curveball changeup. This kid has got a power arm. He'll get it over 100 miles an hour. It doesn't have to, but he's got the ability. And against the Padres last September in Pittsburgh, he pitched only six innings and he struck out 12, his career high. 96 again. Just inside. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit like Andrew Castor, where he's got the big, easy, smooth delivery, and that ball just jumps out of his hand. It doesn't seem to be a violent motion. No. Almost like you're playing catch in the yep. backyard. Three and one. Very simple delivery. Look at him use those legs right there. Get that backside going. Drive with those thighs, kind of knee down towards the ground a little bit. Stiff front side. Getting that torque on the upper part of the body. Full count. All fastballs to Cabrera. All at 95-96. Andrew Kashner, hopeful that he'll be on the mound this weekend against the Washington Nationals. Even kind of look alike, huh? Mm -hmm. Beard and the uh, good moss. <laughs> or salad. But is it moss or salad? What it's ball either is yeah. fine. Okay. I like it. Cabbage. Curly cabbage for yeah. Cashner there. Chopped to the first base side, just foul. He saw Ike Davis try to wave it into fair territory as he made the reception. So, how fast is Cole? Fourth fastest on average in the majors this year at 95.7. We saw that young Kansas City mm -hmm. curler, Jordani Ventura. He was something, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and that's the average. That's not them topping out. That's their average fastball speed, and that's that's impressive. Full count to Cabrera. He laid off. Ball four. That's a good start. A good at bat for Cabrera. Well, the Pirates set up their defense this way. It's brought to you by Honda. Harrison and left McCutcheon center field and Snyder will patrol right field. Alvarez at third, Mercer the shortstop, Walker and Davis on the right side. Martin behind the plate for Cole. Jace Headley. Cabrera with 12 steals. He takes off in the first pitch. A throw by Martin is in time. It was a one hopper, but it went right to the bag. Cabrera almost tagged himself out. Perfect throw by Martin, even though it didn't get there on the fly. Well, I like that ever Cabrera being aggressive early on. High leg kick from Garrett Cole. Wow, hit Mercer played that hop nicely. It was a low hop. He didn't really have to go up and get it. He stayed down on it. Right on the hand yeah. just before he touches the bag. Had, no, to, be, had to be perfect, yeah. and it was. And no argument from Everett Cabrera either. No body language saying that, hey, I got in there. So close for number 13. Been nice to get that man at second with no one out here in the first inning, but. Headley a rough night last night. 0 for 3 and was hit by a pitch. That ball fouled at the plate, so his average down under the 200 line at 197. And Mr. Enberg, they have the shift on right there. Even right there, just a lot of room. Chase Haley can go that way, but the spray charts show that he likes to hit the ball there. Outfield pretty straight away. Although, Snyder in right field, he's really shading that right center field gap. Yeah, they give him the corner in right. Off speed at 90 on that pitch, 2-2. Two and two. And a gap in left center because Harrison is way over near the line in left field. But when's the last time you saw Headley hit a ball to left center field? He hits that kind of ball into the right field corner. Foul. Missed by about 10 feet. I think it's worth revisiting that shift right there. As you see the three on the right side and then 
That's the lone infielder as Chase Headley has all that room on the ground. And then look at here. Look how far over he is in the right center field gap. And the count goes full. He went three and two to Cabrera. Walked him. Now Headley has taken it full. Strike three called. Headley caught looking at a breaking ball. First strikeout for Cole, two away, and time for the Saquon Casino. Daycation, stat of the game. And we mentioned earlier, Cole, a career high last September in just six innings, he struck out 12 Padres in a very impressive performance and win. Let me guess, that's two strikeouts an inning. Average. Two times the reverse, yeah. Carry the. Carry the Right on. 10 1 win. That's what was really a plus the number. A plus, professor? <laughs> I'm not giving any pluses yet. Too early in the semester. We've got 104 games to go, you know. Yeah. Or more. That's right. Seth Smith. 310 average. Leading the club. Well, technically. Maven at 311 has the best batting average, but much less appearances. Number eight in the National League in slugging percentage. Number four in on base percentage. Leading in home run six, doubles 13, triples three, walks 27. What an acquisition, Seth Smith. Mm -hmm. Two and one the count. Same alignment for Smith with the shift on as they used against Headley. Three balls and a strike. Foul back. You know one thing I've noticed. I know this is only game two and we're in the first inning, but. Garrett Cole is following what Charlie Morton did last night. Not afraid to throw fastballs into lefties. I mean, they are challenging these hitters. Got a little extra on that. 98 miles an hour on a 3 1 pitch. All three hitters full count here in the first inning. And did you see what Garrett Cole finished off Chase Headley with? Full count. Yacker, curveball, nasty. That was a fastball there to Seth Smith. When you throw 98, you can take nasty oh. to filthy. Huh? Yes. Nice. I like the uh, I like the vernacular. That's nice. <laughs> Hanging around that clubhouse. Weak swing and a miss by Smith. He was fooled as he got the curveball, as did Headley. A couple of strikeouts for Cole. No score.
They go top of the second, no scores. We get to know three things on Jesse Hahn. Interesting note, he was teammates with Mets pitcher Matt Harvey in high school at Finch Senior High School that was in Connecticut. Also in high school, pretty big basketball player. So good that he had some letters sent from Division One schools to play some college basketball. And as you guys mentioned, he's good with the scissors. He cut his teammates hair during spring training, which all makes sense now. When he got the call up, they said, hey, do you have your scissors with you? And he said, no, why? And they said, because Buddy Blackman need a haircut. You're headed to San Diego. <laughs> it all comes full circle now. Yeah, that's a great story. Second inning, no score. It'll be Ooh. the middle three in the Bucks order. Ike Davis, Russell Martin, and Pedro Alvarez. And with a strikeout and a one, two, three first inning. Foul tip, one and one. It was a significant trade with Tampa Bay in the offseason, wasn't it? Absolutely. Logan Forsyth going to the Rays. Brett Boxberger. Three pitchers. Young pitchers to Tampa Bay. A swing and a miss at a curveball. Good one. Second strikeout. Oh, looks like Jesse Hahn left Uncle Charlie on the pass list. Look at this up on top. Great arm speed and great rotation. That is off the table. That's a 12 to 6 here. That's a nose to toes. That had plenty of break. Russell Martin, the hitter. In spring training, Han did not throw any sliders. He wanted to just stay with the change of fastball curveball. He'll throw an occasional slider now, but it's still part of the whole rehabilitation from the Tommy John. They don't want to overwork that arm. If thrown correctly, the curveball is better on the arm than the slider. Because essentially what you're doing is just turning your wrist. The slider, you're kind of working around the ball a little bit, and that puts a little too much torque on your elbow if not thrown correctly. Another 2 0 count. Ripped into left field as Martin, a solid single through the hole. First hit of the game to the catcher, Russell Martin. That'll help his 239 average and bring up Pedro Alvarez. Alvarez checks in with the power numbers 10 homers and 31 runs batted in. His average is down 227. Infield will swing around, stack up the right side. Only Cabrera on the left side as Headley moves closest to second base on the second base side. Jerko way over into the hole and Alonzo holding on the runner. So Han working from the stretch for the first time. On the inside corner, and let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines spray chart on Alvarez. I like it. Tells me that he's going to right center field. He's going to left center field majority of the time. You make a mistake on an off-speed pitch, he'll pull it that way. Therefore, 14 hits to right field, and occasionally he will go to left. That spray chart delays the alignment. Is they're lined up as if he's going to pull it to the right side where he really plays the middle of the field based on the chart. Yeah, you see the three infielders on that right side there. Number four, shortstop area. And then the outfield swinging a little bit towards the shortstop side in center field. Mm -hmm. It's well planned, well scouted. Yeah, it's a nice fastball at 93 and. Again, much mm -hmm. like his pitching opponent, Garrett Cole. Not a lot of effort. Alvarez last night was able to defeat the shift on a couple of at bats, a couple of hits. Just drove it through a hole. The smaller holes on that right side. But he found them, but he didn't find that fastball. Went up the ladder. Third strikeout for Jesse Hahn. Went up the ladder with the fastball to get Alvarez. And you know what? That's a great spot. It's elevated. It's on the inner half of the plate. Can't get hurt up there. Look at how tied up Alvarez is there trying to get his hands through. Good luck on that pitch. Travis Snyder, left-handed hitter, steps up. 
top pinch hitters in the National League. Seven for 22 gets a start tonight. And going back to uh, Jesse Hahn, he was regarded as a first or second round draft pick at Virginia Tech, but hurt his elbow. But everyone saw the potential and still drafted in the sixth round by Tampa Bay. Got the Tommy John. And when Josh Burns made the trade with Tampa Bay and Logan Forsyth and Tissenbaum, uh, young infielder Boxberger, Lawless, and, and Breezy Pitchers, everyone read Alex Torres being the key member of the trade coming to the Padres. That'll be foul because the Padres need that left handed pitcher in the bullpen mm -hmm. with uh, Joe Thatcher in Arizona. But the, the surprise to us, but not to Burns, was he all along wanted Jesse Hunt. And you can see why. Absolutely. Figuring that Han now has had time to recover from the Tommy John. Pitched a little last year, not a lot. And they saw in spring training that he has a live arm. One and two coming up. Snyder lifts it to shallow left. A long run for Cabrera into foul territory, and he can't make the play. Foul ball. And back to first base, Russell Martin, who was hustling all the way. Big effort by Cabrera. Just missed. That is a long run for Cabrera. And oh, the old slip and slide. He's going, he's going so hard at look how far he slides right there. And then he hits the <laughs> sandpaper. He's still going. Like on ice. This will give you a good idea how far he actually ran for that flash lift. That's got to be about 35 oh, yards. Yeah. With the Padres in field goal position. <laughs> Catch that one. Back with a one and two, Han. Huh? You know, I think having Renee Rivera behind the plate tonight also for Jesse Han takes a lot of the think work out of Jesse Han's head. He's just going to put down some fingers. Throw up a target, and Jesse just needs to hit that target. And I think that's a, a bonus for the young right hander. Trust yeah. his catcher. Absolutely. Curveball strike three call. That one with a big bend just nipped the outside corner. So Han strikes out the side. Four in the first two innings for the right hander from Connecticut. And look at uh, Rivera help him out with that framing. Here come the Padres, bottom of the second. Earlier tonight on field ceremonies, Fox Sports San Diego general manager Henry Ford presented a donation of $10,000 to Star Pal. 
an organization that empowers underserved youth to build a safer and more prosperous community by engaging them with law enforcement. Fox Sports San Diego supporting Star Pal with a $10,000 donation tonight. And the chief of police here in San Diego, part of the ceremony, she's been on the board of directors of Star Pal, is going to join us the next inning. And you're going to meet a fireball in Shelly Zimmerman. Oh, yeah. Yandra Alonzo leads off the bottom of the second. Garrett Cole struck out two in the first inning, and Alonso lifts that one to left field. Harrison coasts toward the line for the first down. Brings up Jed Jerko. Cole, as a rookie last year, was 10 and 7. Got his baptism in the playoffs. Pitched in two of the games of the National League Division Series against St. Louis had a seven to one win. Yeah, he was very impressive. 117 innings pitched, fewer hits at 109. He only walked 28. So power arms got decent control. Padres beat him two to one. Ian Kennedy outpitched him in the other outing last year, and then he came back with that 10 1 win and 12 strikeouts. 2 0 to Jerko. Will Venable on deck. One out here in the second. No score. Padres hunting for their first hit. In there at 93. His dad, Garrett Cole's dad, growing up in Syracuse, New York, was a Yankee fan. And uh, anyone who followed the Yankees, no matter what era, admired greatly the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig. Round ball to the right side. Walker had to range to the grass and throws out Jerko. Two away. And so Cole, when they asked him, who do you mind in baseball? He said, Luke Gehrig, you don't find many young guys saying, nope. you know, man from the 20s and 30s. And speaking of Gehrig, this on this exact day, June 3rd, Gehrig hit one, two, three, four home runs in a row and just missed, hit the wall with number five. First man in baseball history, four consecutive home runs in a game. Oh, he was a big man. Oh, huh? the iron horse. Talk about a one two punch. With Ruth and Gary. You know, it tells you a little bit of something about the, the baseball intellect of Garrett Cole and Jesse Hahn, because Jesse Hahn, being the Pirate fan, admiring Roberto Clemente at the young age of 24. Yeah, right on. And that's really refreshing, isn't it? That's dad teaching well. Yes. Huh? Venable checking in at 208 tonight. Still on one home run for the season after 22 a year ago. 97 on that fastball. You better be ready, and then when you're geared up for the fastball, as you must be, then that curveball striking mm -hmm. out both Headley and Smith. Goes back to the fastball inside, two and two. You got a feeling Cole's about to throw that yacker. Pump that one up to 98. Line drive, right field corner, fair ball. Dunnable has the Padres' first hit, and it's for extra bases. A double for Venable with two outs here in the second. Well, Dick, you talked about the breaky ball from Garrett Cole, and with two strikes, Will Venable has to be really quick. Maybe went to the well one too many times. A heavy dose of fastballs in Will. It sounds like he breaks that bat. He would gladly sacrifice that for the double, but he was very quick to that baseball. The front foot was down. Get those hands through quickly for the double with two outs. The Padres have a man in scoring position for the first time on their initial hit, and Cameron Maben steps up.
way outside. Cole having the pitch from the stretch for the second time. He walked Cabrera, but he only had to throw one pitch from the stretch. He's Cabrera tried to steal on the first pitch. A uh, strike. One and one. Well, the Padres uh, last in the majors in hitting 224. Where it is most painful is in that runner in scoring position category. There were one for 11 last night, so they had chances. Although 10 to 3 was a big margin to make up. But here's their first opportunity tonight. And Maben awaits now the 2 1 pitch. We well, talk a look at the, uh, the arsenal of Garrett Cole. No, fastball heavy. Generally speaking, when you have a pitcher that has four types of pitches, he's going to be heavy on the fastball. We've seen the nice curveball at 16%. Occasionally a slider and a changeup. Wing and a miss, and there's the curve. That's wicked. Wicked it is. Gets on top of it. Good depth to it. What'd you see about halfway there? It took a sharp left hand turn. Another 2 2 count. Got him. Right back with the breaking ball. So three strikeouts for Cole. Han has four. No score after two. Broadcast booth. The new chief of police for the city of San Diego. She's been in the police department for 32 years. Shelly Zimmerman. She's a sports fan, and I'll guarantee you, you don't want to go arguing about football and baseball with her. <laughs> nice to have you with us, Chief. Thank you very much. I Thanks. appreciate that. I'm honored to be here. Honored for the privilege to be the chief of police of the San Diego Police Department. And we've got a good one. And she grew up in Ohio, went to Ohio State University. And as the story goes, Chief, you uh, went to the 1980 Rose Bowl game when your Buckeyes played USC, and you fell in love with uh, San Diego. That's correct. Uh, that was the best part of the trip. Unfortunately, with about 20 seconds left, Charles White scored a touchdown and beat my Buckeyes, took the national championship <laughs> away from us that game. But uh, I guess I would say I'm the product of tourism here in San Diego. So you went to the zoo, and you saw San Diego, and you decided to stay here. Didn't have a job? Didn't have a job. Didn't have a place to stay. I, I didn't know anyone. And uh, got off the plane, and uh, this is my new home. Why Couldn't law be happier. Why law enforcement? You know, uh, I was actually had planned to go to law school. My dad was a trial attorney in Cleveland, and I planned, planned to do that. But I saw that the police department was hiring. I needed a job to put myself through law school, and I fell in love with it from day one. And here I am as the chief of police. You were a criminal justice major, though, at Ohio State. I was, State. yes. Well, here's Jordy Mercer. He was a pain for the Padres last night. Four hits, including a home run that got the Pirates on the board first. Uh, one nothing early on. He'll be followed by Cole and then 
Harrison. Well, tonight, Tuesday night, uh, Padres celebrating and honoring and saluting the first responder. Boy, he hadn't forgotten how to go that way. He had three hits last night to the opposite field, and Mercer with a single to open the third inning. And tonight, especially the female first responders were here to be able to come out to the foul line and be applauded by the fans at Petco. I could be proud of those ladies, huh? Fantastic. We have a fantastic police department, and uh, we're actively hiring right now, and it's a great career for a woman, for a man. Uh, we're, you know, we just want the very best and the brightest from all of our communities, and uh, we encourage everyone to come out. If you want to have an opportunity to make a positive difference in somebody's life every single day, then come join our police department. What's the percentage uh, women do? About 15% on our department are women. 15? About 15, yes. Mm. One try by Cole goes foul. Chief, before the game, a check was presented. Star Pell, it's a great event from Fox Sports San Diego, $10,000. Talk about Star Pell and what it means for law enforcement and just what it means for the youth in our community. Absolutely. You know, what we talk about is at Star Pell, sports training, academics, recreation, police athletic league, and it's bringing youth and law enforcement together today to build safer communities tomorrow. And uh, we, we can't thank you enough for everything that you've done. That $10,000 is going to save lives, absolutely, as uh, we build teamwork, build mentorship, uh, help the youth make positive choices. Hans got to play at second base. Maybe a double play. No, Cole runs much too well, but... They put the pitcher on the bases, so that's a plus for the Padres defensively. You know, you made an interesting comment. We were at an event, the Challenge Athletes Foundation, uh, just last week, and talking about the importance of sport, the Charger games, the Padre games, to police force. It, it really makes a difference. You know, that's true that we were talking about that, that at the Challenge Athletes Foundation, and it brings a community together. And as we talk about one city, one police department, everybody gets behind their sports teams and gets excited about that. And, uh, you know, here, you know, with the Padres, with so many people that are here today and uh, many more that we want to come out. And it, and it has that enthusiasm, and it brings all the different communities within San Diego together and not just in San Diego as I spoke about is that I am from Cleveland and had the same effect in Cleveland when the sports teams are are doing well the city does well and you uh, in a police car can on a big game whether it be baseball or football it's uh, probably the lowest crime rate of uh, the entire week, right? That's very true. Uh, you know, the Chargers, uh, that they were in the playoffs uh, last year, and uh, everybody just, you know, took a deep breath, and uh, a lot of things were going very well in the city, and everybody was getting behind the, uh, the sports teams. And uh, we hope, you know, the Padres here that uh, we're going to have a great season. Here's leadoff hitter Harrison, and the curveball misses. You were in so many different departments as you grew through the police ranks to become the police chief. What was the most difficult uh, challenge for you? You know, there. what I would say is that uh, I wouldn't say any of them were a difficult challenge. My uh, philosophy has always been that uh, there's no bad assignments or just bad attitudes, and uh, I come to work every single day uh, with, a, with a huge desire, a passion, just to make a difference, a positive difference in somebody's life. And uh, I, I couldn't be more honored for this opportunity to be the chief of police. You know, one of my favorite stories, Chief, is when you had to go into a high school. That's true. And undercover, right? Yes, 21 Jump Street. How, how yeah. old were you at the time, and how, who did you try to, what, what class were you uh, infiltrating? You know, it was, uh, I went in as a junior at Patrick Henry High School. I was uh, just a, a new rookie police officer. I was about 23 years old. And uh, in the end of, uh, of about a se semester, I had made uh, 100, more than 100 narcotic purchases and uh, <laughs> arrested 70 students who were actively dealing drugs. Wow. You went in as a How'd you do in class? Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, I will tell you, once you've been to college, high school's a lot easier. <laughs> so as a 23-year-old, you're in there as a 17-year-old. That's correct. How many yes. friends, I mean, did, did, did you notice that kids were coming up to you and wanting to be your friend and just was it easy well you know what i noticed is that the uh, the students unfortunately there was you know quite a bit of drug dealing and drug usage at the school which was you know extremely unfortunate and so you know my role as a police officer was go to make sure that um that those that were using drugs uh, wouldn't use them anymore and to arrest the drug dealers. And I would tell you that there was a lot of positive changes after that. Uh, and several of the students sought me out afterwards and, and thanked me and thanked me for turning their life around uh, because they knew they were going down the wrong path. Good. What a lady, huh? We've got a, we got a <laughs> champ here. Yeah. How many uh, 
women throughout the United States in a city this large, a metropolitan area, how many women are police chiefs? You know, it's my understanding that uh, in the top, I think, uh, 10 or 15 uh, cities for as far as population that I'm the only one. There's the fifth strikeout for Han, two away here in the third inning. And that'll bring up Neil Walker. 32 years serving our community and now at the very top where your influence you're like the head coach here in San Diego. Yeah and some people are calling me the head coach. Some <laughs> of them are calling me chief. Some are uh, calling me the head coach. I do like to talk a lot about sports analogies because he is a police officer going out making a positive difference in somebody's life motivating. We talk a lot about teamwork service above self and that's a lot about what the what the sports also does to it. Are you pretty hands on chief as far as you know you're not just up there in your office but do you get out and, and like to me a good leader is one that goes down to the people who are working underneath who are doing the things that nobody ever sees is that is that now my my style is definitely walking around yeah. I, I love to talk with people this is a people business and uh, that is absolutely my style um, and you're right being on more than 32 years you know, working our way through the ranks uh oh Neil uh, Walker goes the opposite field and it carries away from Seth Smith he thought he had a chance but the ball just falls into the first row and Walker the leading home run hitter of all second baseman in the league just crushed his 11th and the Pirates take a 2 0 lead. Oh, well, we have to remember that Jesse Hahn has come from double A, right? Double A to the big leagues. Usually in double A, you probably get away with a pitch like this. But Neil Walker putting up good numbers, batting in the number two slot. He talked about a great at bat, taking a breaky ball. That's a curveball to a left handed hitter, taking it the opposite way over 370 feet possibly that's very impressive for the left handed hitter I didn't think that it would go all the I way I didn't think so either especially on a night like tonight he hit that well number 11 he now has 34 Ooh. runs batted in to lead all major league second baseman good bat speed when he made contact and goes the opposite way for the home run so here in the third the Pirates take the lead 2 nothing and here's Andrew McCutcheon I think you should go down chief and arrest that man right there. <laughs> take him out of the game I think we can do that yeah. <laughs> right before he comes back up to bat. <laughs> so were you were an Indians fan? Uh, I was, grew up a Cleveland Indians fan, Cleveland Browns, Cavaliers, although we won't talk about LeBron. And uh, <laughs> now, unfortunately, you know, the product of the uh, Red Ride 88, the drive, the fumble, the pitch, the shot. Um, you know, it hasn't been a lot of championships for me in Cleveland, but, uh, <laughs> but thankfully, as a graduate of The Ohio State University, we, uh, we've, we've had a few, so that's great. Listen, with your knowledge about sports and your uh, obvious passion, uh, I'm getting a little nervous about you standing <laughs> around too long. Uh, you're doing much too well with that microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, sports brings everybody together, yeah. and uh, it's about having relationships and making a connection with so many of the different people that yeah. we come with. And, come in contact with in our community and, and sports plays a huge part of that and the star pal thing is just unbelievable I've been to that luncheon maybe eight ten times you do a great job it, thank it, you. It, you know the celebrity lunch uh, the celebrities that come in and you know they take tips for go get food and stuff like that yeah. and, and the, the list of celebrities that come is just unbelievable each and every year you know we talked about that coach Fisher of the yes. Aztecs now and you know where else can you get that former coach of that team up north of Ohio uh, to come with the, probably the, the biggest Buckeye fan come together in San Diego to you know, build safer communities for our youth. McCutcheon works that 3 2 pitch and takes ball four. First walk from Jesse Hahn will bring up the cleanup in Ike Davis and a visit from his catcher, Rivera. Well, Chief, we're going to let you go enjoy the game. It was a, our delight to be able to have you with us. Thank you very much. And I'm honored. We're, we're so you. excited about you being. The head coach. <laughs> I love that. Thank you very much, and we're all in this together. Make sure that San Diego is the safest city in the United States. All right. Shelly Zimmerman, ladies thank and gentlemen. Chief, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Chief of Police, San Diego, California. One of a kind. And as a person, one of the kindest. We'll see when you get in trouble <laughs> how kind she is. <laughs> Two nothing now, Pirates. A man aboard with two out. McCutcheon with another walk. He has 44 this year. Davis struck out swinging the first time. Shift is on. She's great, isn't she? Oh, she's a dynamo. She, absolutely. Lucky to have her here in San Diego. You know she's going to get things done and done the right way.
Yeah, she's campaigning. She'd like to see that football stadium yep. built downtown. She said that you know that's it's a matter of fact that it's a, a delight when teams are doing well. People stay at home or go to the games yep. and they're not uh, getting in trouble with somebody else and enjoying rooting for their their city and their team. Ground ball right into the shift and Jerko plays perfectly for the out. But the Bucks on a single by Mercer home run Walker late two nothing. Thing. We talk about how strange yesterday was with the amount of pitches thrown that led to a lot of position changes, which also led to a lot of switcheroo regarding equipment. We saw Renee Rivera give his bat to Alex Torres when he had to go up to bat. And then when they switched at first base and third base and Yonder Alonso took over for Chase Headley at third, he borrowed Chase Headley's uh, glove and I asked him why he said well you know Renee I gave him a first base glove a couple days ago but it wasn't broken in yet so I let him borrow mine so I needed a glove I asked Chase and I said hey why not he's won a gold glove with it it seems to work so I'm going to use it uh, Chase said take it whenever you want he made a th few good grabs with it one other interesting note we talk about the amount of pitches thrown you guys were talking about how many baseballs they went through Average baseball game, I asked the equipment manager, Spencer, they go through eight dozen. Take a guess of how many they went through yesterday. Go ahead, Dick. I'm, I'm going to say first. 20 dozen. I'll go over and say 22. Oh, 13. Oh, only 13. Yeah. Well, that's still 13 times 12. Um. <laughs> 156. <laughs> 156 baseballs consumed last night. Renee Rivera trying to get something back for the Padres here in the bottom of the third. He'll be followed by Han. We'll see what kind of hitter he is, and then Cabrera. Four. I got 155. 13 times 12. Well, it's got to be six. Three times two. 156. She's right. Don't That's argue. Right. I was yeah, never good. There enough. goes that A. I wanted to give it to you. I was just checking to see if you were on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's two, a lot of baseballs. Two and one to Rivera. Only one hit. Venables two out double in the second. <laughs> two and two. Cole has been forced to use a considerable number of pitches. 41 already with no one out in the third. With his arm, he'll go over 100. A full count. He walked Cabrera to start the first inning. That's the only free ticket. Three strikeouts. And he's gone over 100 pitches six times. Garrett Cole, the most he's thrown, 112. That was a couple starts ago. Chop foul, the third. 
I was just thinking about Chris Button's report with the uh, the leather exchange mm -hmm. you know, with Alonso giving his first base glove to Rivera because he didn't have one. Now Alonso doesn't have a mitt, so he goes to Headley and he gets Headleys. You know, we have that baseball shuffle in every game here at Petco where right. you try to follow the ball and right. see under what hat, which hat it is dressed. We could have the leather exchange. You know, where's the ball hiding? Who's glove? Chase Headley, very generous. As you mentioned last night, a lot of players superstitious. They don't want anyone yeah. getting near their glove. Ball four. There's the start here in the third, a leadoff one. And time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag SD fan photo. Chance to have it shown on our telecast brought to you by AT&T. We're going to see whether Han learned his bunting lessons well down in the minor leagues. We'll be asked to sacrifice here. Alvarez creeps in on the grass at third. First baseman Davis has to hold Rivera. And that's why you want to butt down that first base line. Squares early and fouls it off. Tell you what, Ike Davis was crashing big time. Let's see, lifted that front leg of his. And the Padres pitchers, when they take batting practice before every game, they not only work on the bunts and and their swings, but they work on that butcher boy. In mm -hmm. fact, we watched Han today, and he executed the butcher boy a couple of times rather well. That third baseman and first baseman right into his whiskers. Yeah, maybe that's why Glenn Hoffman came down to whisper something in his ear. Yep, that's exactly what it was. But he fouls it away. Keep those uh, corner infielders a little more honest. Wouldn't that have been something in his first base? Well, they get yeah. bad to get a base. <laughs> yeah, you get some movement, maybe chop it off the plate. You get a high hopper. You find a hole maybe on that right side. Just trying to play a little pepper. But the key is on that play to hit it on the ground. You hit it in the air. It doesn't do any good. Unless you hit it out of the ballpark. Takes inside. <laughs> trying to move Rivera into scoring position here in the third. Trailing 2-0. Right, look at Alvarez. My goodness. And another good take. The rookie not chasing. Oh, boy, you better have a good dental plan. Yeah. <laughs> and the bun is a good one. Pull the first base. You know, that little lob almost too low as Mercer cover Walker rather covers and uh, Han gets a hand as he goes to the dugout. Executed the bunt, sacrificed with two strikes. Well, it took a while, but he executed this perfectly. Pull with the high fastball, bunts the top half, deads it perfectly. Even though you have three. Defenders rushing on the corners that one being Gary Cole well, nice change up over to first base That's got to be a good feeling for the kid. Yeah high fives in that big league dugout yeah, Helping his own cause gives Cabrera and then Headley a chance to pick up a run Cabrera backing out and the plate umpire Porter bellowing timeout Cabrera walked and was caught stealing Strike one oh. Curveball spins in there at 84. 15 games against the Bucks. Cabrera has enjoyed a 304 average. A double RBI double last night. <laughs> 96. Now, one thing I've noticed about home plate umpire Alan Porter, he has given the high strike, and according to tracks, that was a legitimate strike. And you know what, quite frankly, I kind of like it when you give the high strike like that. But that's what the strike zone is. And a pitcher throws a pitch there, he should be rewarded. No matter what uniform you're wearing. Agreed. That's the rule. Mm -hmm. Throw it in there, you get a strike. <laughs> Third ball hangs considerably outside, and it's two and one.
Cabrera's double last night was up the alley and left center. Up on the handle with two strikes. Got him. Number four. Well, Garrett Cole has so much to offer. We talked about him earlier in his repertoire, and usually fastball heavy. Almost 70%. Well, look at what he does here with the runner in scoring position. First pitch curveball, then he's going up and in. Kind of going soft, and then finishes it off with a curveball down out of the zone. Chase Headley struck out on the curveball the first time, and he gets a curveball to begin this sequence. Second, two out. Tried to get him to go up the ladder. You can see exactly what he's trying to do. Curveball, curveball, fastball. Now, do you go back to the fastball because the hitter's got the curveball in the back of his mind? Uh, quite a mind game going on right here. What do you think? Well, I tell you what, I, I would. I, I think you could freeze him with a fastball away, but I'm betting on Cole throwing another yacker right here. No nope, fastball. And upstairs again. But he changes the eye level now. Yep. Headley looking up there, and you got to figure this one will be the curveball. But he threw yeah. three two right his first at bat. Three two curveball got Headley looking, and he got Seth Smith on a three two yep. curveball. Just did foul off the curve. Who's going to win this battle? It's part of the charm of this great game. The individual battle. This is what the game's all about pitcher, hitter. The rest are complimentary players, and you appreciate their talents. But ultimately, it comes down to this hitter looking for something he can hit, pitcher trying to fool you or overpower you. High fly ball back of short. Mercer called off by the left fielder Harrison, and that's it for the Padres. They leave Rivera stranded at second. Game tickets and transportation on the Fan Express for Star Pal.
Their trip today sponsored by our partners at Kaiser Permanente. First responders night, Tuesday taco night. The women of the first responders, and many of them from the San Diego Police Department, honored before the game. Great to have Shelly Zimmerman, our very distinguished and energetic police chief, to be with us here in the broadcast booth on Fox Sports San Diego. It's made the night special already, huh? Absolutely. Glad she had a chance to come up here and uh, share some stories. Meanwhile, Garrett Cole allowing only one hit, the Venable double through the first three innings, leads 2 0. Russell Martin will start things in the fourth for Pittsburgh. Good curveball. Well, Mark Sweeney joins us down by the Pottery Dugout. And, Mark, your assessment of the young right hander. A nice beginning. I mean, if you look at it, good fastball, good curveball tonight. And, and you got to credit Walker for hitting a good pitch out of the ballpark. I was really surprised on that. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to go. How did it look from down there? Well, I didn't get to, I was up in the press box still, but very impressive. I saw the replays, but it was spotted. It looks like he's got good chemistry with Rene Rivera tonight. Bit inside. Two and one. He's got that fastball up to 95 miles an hour. As he's reached the 60 pitch mark. And that will be closely monitored. He went uh, just shy of 80 pitches his last outing and in five innings. But Black, I think at this point, would take five innings. That sure. would uh, help that bullpen. You got Benoit and Street. They're fresh, but that would be eighth and ninth inning. You need somebody to work that sixth and seventh if Han indeed just goes five. And Martin has a leadoff walk. Well, we're going to talk about the number two from Jesse Hahn, the curveball. At times tonight, he's really thrown a good one. Get some help from Rivera. Get it down. Swung on and missed. Here's another one. Up top, good rotation. Got the call on this one. And then Neil Walker, Mark Sweeney. It amazes me. A left-handed hitter, right-handed pitcher, backdoor curveball, taking it the opposite way. That's something special. Looked like he was definitely doing that. That was one of his plans, and you have to have that, especially that rolling breaking ball away and to hit it out especially here at Beko Park very impressive. Yeah because if you try to pull that ball it's probably a weak ground to the right side right. That curveball. Shift on for Pedro Alvarez with a leadoff walk to Martin. Alvarez struck out swinging the first time. He certainly didn't show any nervous jitters at all coming out there his major league debut well poised you know Mark that's what I wanted to ask you too because it's so so different that you you you're going through those emotions for the hitter it's one at bat that's very you're nervous about but then when you're throwing pitch after pitch how, how do you calm those nerves I think it gets to a comfort level quicker Mark just because of that you're getting the ball back you're throwing 10 20 30 pitches now Han. We take a look at the uh, the pitch count now is number 64. So I think the uh, the ease factor works a little bit quicker. And I think also the supporting cast. I think Bud Black, as soon as he was in the clubhouse yesterday, called him and talked to him. And Rene Rivera, hey, here's how we're going to go. Darren Balls are going into the meetings, going over the hitters. I think the supporting cast of his teammates helps with that as well before he takes them out for his big league debut. And it's got to be different too from game planning because there's not a lot of game planning. In the minor leagues, it's executing your pitches. That is very different when you come up to the big leagues here, especially what Darren Balsey does yeah. for the scouting reports. And you know, he's going to find out really quickly. A 2 0 fastball down the middle, probably not going to be taken or fallen back. It's going to probably be hitting the gap somewhere. 2 and 1 now to Alvarez. And his ball to strike ratio is not as positive as Bud Black would like. Too many pitches out of the strike zone, and there's a man just called up by the Padres, Jason Lane, 37 years young, former outfielder with the Padres. Reinvented himself as a left handed pitcher, and he's made it back to the big leagues. Oh, that ball is drilled to right field. It's up and it's gone. A line laser. Into the jack track and Alvarez matches Walker. Each has hit number 11 tonight. Both two run shots. And as Alvarez circles the bases, the Butts have built their lead to 4 0.
Lead off walk. Two run blast. Well, he tried to go down and in. Two seam fastball. Three and one fastball count. Usually maybe in double A, a left-handed hitter. He's not going to do that, but that's Pedro Alvarez. He drops the head of that Schlaley and sends it a long way. Working into a hitter's count. No fly ball that one. That was a line drive all the way. Ground ball to second. Travis Snyder out 4-3 for the first out here in the fourth. 105.8. The contact speed. Alvarez generating. The line that shot. That was a close line in the right field. Mark Sweeney, that's some serious bat speed. Yeah, down and in, and that's the danger zone for power hitters, on, in, especially in the major leagues. You see that ball off the bat. That is impressive, 105 miles an hour. This is a good hitting club. In fact, uh, number five in the National League currently at 251, but since the 1st of May, they're the second best hitting team in the majors. First in the National League at 276, and second only to Toronto, 278 in the majors since May 1. Significant uh, home run and RBI for Alvarez in his young career. A little looper, foul ball. Alonzo almost got to it. That was his 300th and 301st career RBIs on the home run. Good man on the right there, Francisco Liriano, toned the slab tomorrow for the Bucks. Saved a couple of those for me, huh? Yeah. And Jordy Mercer after going four for four his first at four at bats last night a home run an RBI single scored three runs then he walked and scored finally the Padres got him out struck him out. Uh, Troy Patton got him in the ninth inning. Then he opens tonight with another line drive single to right. And another hit to left. Goodness. Entered this series hitting 199. It looks like a batting champion. Everything he's hit has been solid. He's now eight for the last 11 at bats. Well, we saw him last night. He chokes up on the bat, Mark Sweeney. What do you think about Jordy Mercer? Yeah, controlling the bat, and it, it, he looks very comfortable in the box. It's interesting to see how they attack him now. Try to move his feet, maybe later in the game, because he is comfortable in the box, and you can see he's handling that barrel. One out single brings up the pitcher Cole. Tried to sacrifice the first time, but was safe on the fielder's choice. On throughout the runner Mercer at second base. Put it in the air and Alonzo with the easy play. So two out to Josh Harrison. Cole upset with himself, understandably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, you know, and as a pitcher, I don't care if it's four nothing, one nothing, or ten nothing. You get the bunt sign, you want to try to move that runner over, and you don't do it. It's upsetting. The unofficial measurement of the two home runs Walker to left field at 381 feet into the first row and Alvarez into the jack track at 364. Both balls hit extraordinarily well. Harrison has popped to second and struck out tonight. Breaking ball fooled Harrison, but didn't hit the inside corner. So Cole, the comfort of a four run lead now here in the fourth.
Mercer, in case you're wondering, does not have a steal this year. 2 0. You know, I, I just can't help thinking about that home run that Alvarez hit. I mean, remember so many years the Pirates struggling, right? And Pedro Alvarez is one of those position players on the fast track to the big leagues and learning at the big league level. And then all of a sudden, you get an Andrew McCutcheon coming up. You get some young pitchers coming. You get Garrett. All of a sudden, things start gelling together. Playoffs last year, first what? First time in 19, 20 years? You know, all those years of suffering. And the, the, the young crop of players coming up to the big leagues and finally paying dividends. Yeah, Walker is playing like an all star. Yeah. McCutcheon was the most valuable player last year. And Alvarez tied Paul Goldschmidt of Arizona most home runs last year with 36. Legit power. Two and one. You know, guys, when you talk about that, you you look you focus on Andrew McCutcheon because he sets that tone. He's an MVP candidate, but everyone else watches his consistency, especially from the offensive side, when you have a guy that is that consistent and he can carry a ball club. So many times you look at these clubs and when they're doing well offensively, usually your main guy is doing well. Oh, he's talking right there, Andrew McCutcheon with Pedro Alvarez. Even after the home run, they're talking pitching, they're talking swinging, they're talking baseball. Ground ball through the right side, skipping the rope, avoiding being hit was Jordy Mercer as Harrison has picked up the sixth hit of the game off Han. And with two outs, Neil Walker, the two run home run man. Comes up and uh, that's going to be all for Han. He's hit the 79 pitch mark, and that's uh, pretty much. They didn't want him to go over 80. He showed some strength. There were some things to like. And Chase Headley saying, "Hey, good start. A couple of long balls. That's all that dented his debut. He leaves down for nothing. Great to meet you, Jesse Han." Was with the Padres back in the 163rd game in Colorado. He played in that game. He was in the outfield. Eventually, wouldn't give up the dream. Wanted to pitch. Um, Randy Smith, the Padres' vice president of player development, called him a night ago to tell him the news. They always do this in a circuitous way. I was kind of following the game and saw that uh, they'd gone through some guys and and. Looked at my phone and had a missed call from him. And when you have a missed call from a, someone in the front office at uh, 11:30 or midnight, you know something something's up. And uh, <laughs> it was a great call to get. Yeah, to have a second life as a major leaguer, back as a pitcher, and if he stays in a game, he can swing the bat. We saw that in batting practice. Yeah, he so can it's, hit. A, it's a two-for-one deal, right? Yeah. So the left-hander, where you see his number, is at El Paso, four-pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, slider, change. 85 to 90 on that fastball. Working to Neil Walker. Walker, a switch hitter, turns it around, hits right handed. Two men on, two out here in the fourth, and already two runs in against Jesse Hahn, who gives up four runs 
on six hits and is responsible for the two men aboard. And a lot to assimilate for the young man. Struck out five, walk two. <laughs> you know, I, I have to chuckle. Why? Because it's just such a great story for Jason Lane. He's just out there. It looks like a finesse type pitcher. Threw a first pitch changeup. Tried to locate a fastball down and away. Finds himself 0 2. Welcome back to the big leagues, Jason Lane. I guess they used him a, a couple of times as an emergency pitcher in a blowout game. And, and uh, the players and coaches said, hey, you've got good stuff. Why don't you stay with it? So he's battled away. He's been in the minors for quite a while. He even pitched an independent ball. Comes up from San Antonio. Played his college ball at USC a couple of years. Barry Zito was a teammate with the Trojans. And he strikes out the first man he faces, Neil Walker. Welcome back to the Bigs. <laughs> have been doing a good job and the reliever, relievers have been even better. Um, you know, the offense has come around and with some timely hits and I think they're going to pick it up here and I think the ball is going to get rolling. Tyson Ross, the uh, Padres leading winner with six. He's on tonight's uh, Fox Sports new ed edition of SD Live. It's uh, not only Tyson Ross, but the original super agent Lee Steinberg is going to join uh, Mike Pomerantz. That's tonight right after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. Well, if Mike Pomerantz is hosting it, you know you're in for a treat. Does a fabulous job on that show. Oh, you're so high in praise everything uh, he does, huh? He's, he's a pro. Really, he's yeah, you're close buddies. How come you don't talk about Mark Sweeney that way? Well, <laughs> for due reason. Yeah. <laughs> hey, nice job, Mark Sweeney, by the way, on the inside corner. Oh, that was fun. We always have a good time with that. Should do it more. I'm all for it. Seth Smith struck out on the 3 2 curveball his first time. Cole has struck out four, walked two, given up just the one hit, a double venable. No damage on the run column. Left center field, Harrison drifts over, one away. Well, uh, Mr. Enberg, you're uh, an aficionado when it comes to tennis. And we showed Chris Bud during inside corner. I want your scouting on. Uh, is that a forehand? Oh, that's a good forehand. Yeah, she's going to get. She's some not top, watching the top, ball. She's got some top spin on that. Well, when you're really good, you just like to smile at the camera. You know, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> yeah. like Great Mar photo opportunity. Oh, it was, it was, was awesome. Outstanding. outstanding. Great forehand. Eat your heart out, Maria Sharapova. <laughs> Yonder Alonzo, wide to left his first time. 
Sharapova, by the way, won today. She's in the semifinals of the French. Two strikes on Alonzo. That's Roland Garros, right? Roland Garros. The terror Batu, the red clay. Roland Garros, named after a French World War I aviator who didn't play tennis. Mm. It was such a World War hero that when they opened Roland Garros in the early 20s, right after the war, they decided to name it after a French ace. And of course, ace is a term used in tennis, right? There you go. Look out. 94 in on the hands there. That'll make you scoot away a little bit. Very economical tonight, though. 66 pitches for Cole. But nothing on the board for the Padres, trailing 4 0. And the Padres have encountered some mighty tough pitching here the last couple, three days. Sunday, they get Chris Sale in Chicago, managed only a couple of hits off him, just five hits off Charlie Morton and company last night. Now just one double facing Garrett Cole. And it won't get any easier tomorrow, Francisco Liriano, although his record isn't quite what it was last year. In fact, he staggered one and five. Strike three called. A fastball catches Alonzo looking. Didn't like the call. But he's gone. Five strikeouts. And that was a slider. We haven't seen any of those, huh? Oh, good call, Dick. Right on the outside corner, he backdoored it. Was it a strike? Southland Fox tracks. Monitoring every pitch. Let's see what. Oh, he got off a the, call. Yeah. yeah, off the plate. Alonso had good reason to argue. Jerko <laughs> takes strike one. Curveball. Grounded to second base, his first at bat. Guys, there's so many times in baseball that you watch the game and you're watching the, the starting pitcher, you're watching how he's working, but you also have to be aware of the strike zone with the umpire. Tonight you've seen a wider strike zone, especially early in the game, and that's an indication of a hitter that you got to be super aggressive when you get up there at the plate. So you're going to see pitches called off the plate, and, and he showed that at the beginning of the game. Yeah, you know, Mark, I've got that umpire guide up here, you know, that's good issued to us every year. The uh, umpire media guy mm -hmm. that's got all their pictures and bios. Every time the home plate umpire, I have it open on his page and I write down little notes. And that's exactly what I wrote down for Alan Porter. Almost like a little scouting report. Calling pitches off the plate. Got to be aggressive. Pitchers should know that. Take advantage. And oh, hitters yeah. got to be beware. Well, he went around and another strikeout for Cole. He has a half dozen. Manhandling the Padres so far. It's 4 0 Pittsburgh.
Fox Sports San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino, real friendly and real close. By Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blaze and Chicken Sandwich. And by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. Visit us at aramco.biz. Mm-mm. Somebody's got to live here. <laughs> and looking at last year's MVP candidates, the top three vote getters, we'll get right back to that as uh, Jason Lane goes to work on Andrew McCutcheon, who struck out and walked so far. Lane working quickly. One and one. McCutcheon, of course, won the MVP honor last year with a fantastic season. Hit 319 with 21 homers. Drives at the left field, but Smith has a play. Well, let's go back to those final three in the balloting. McCutcheon wins it. There are his numbers 28 first place votes. Paul Goldsmith finished second. Big home run year. Great year for Goldsmith. There was a good argument for him to take the honors. And Yadier Molina, many regarded him as the best catcher in baseball. He got a couple of first place votes. Well, you know what? I look at that, and first of all, what in the heck are people thinking if Paul Goldschmidt doesn't get one first place vote? Mark Sweeney, what did you think about that voting last year? I agree with that, but then you go into those wins and, and where your team was placed, and, and I think Andy McCutcheon did stick out. I thought Yadier Molina was that guy because if you look at most valuable player on, on a team, I think Yadier Molina sticks out to me. See, now, uh, this argument comes up every year, and this mm -hmm. is why I like the discussion. The name of the award is most valuable player of the American slash National League. It's not the most valuable player that helps his team get to the playoffs on the plaque. And I know that's criteria. That that's part of the deal. I see your point. You I know mean, if saying? you have the best numbers, even though you're in last place, why aren't you the the is it the best player or the most valuable player? Good play by Cabrera to take care of Ike Davis's chopper over the mound. Two away, and Russell Martin will be the hitter. Yeah, and I'm not saying I'm right, and I'm not saying, you know, people are wrong. It just brings up discussion. Mark Sweeney, how do you how do you see it? Well, I mean, I, I know where you're going, too, because we've had discussions off camera, too. Andre Dawson was that guy right. that, uh, you know, on, a, on a, a position that was clearly that MVP guy. If you have an elite year, which I think if you go back to Paul Goldschmidt, the, he, he did. He had an elite year. I can't fault him for winning that award but when it comes down to when it apples to apples I do think it's about what your club does. Mm -hmm. Martin has singled and walked walked and scored behind uh, Alvarez home run back in the fourth inning. What do you think Dick. Well you know you've got to you know I'm going I'm going to go to McCutcheon since he won it. When you talk about most valuable not only in being the team leader making the big hits the money hits and the money defensive plays. How many games did he win for Pittsburgh with his glove? So you can understand why someone. And then the Pirates won what? 94 games last year yeah. after two decades of not having a winning season. So he was very valuable in your opinion to elevate the, the Pirates to where they got to. He, he was the sexy pick. Yeah. He, you know he was the guy that had the big year for a team that has struggled for a long time. Got him to the playoffs. On the other hand if you said. Would you vote for Paul Goldschmidt? Sure, I would. With those I, you know, I was just really surprised that Goldschmidt got no first place votes. Yeah, yeah. None. You would think somebody from yeah. Arizona might have given him a number one. So that he was almost unanimous, McCutcheon. So there really isn't an argument, is there? Well, Mark, what do you think? Me? Yeah. Oh, I. I, I was. Uh, well, that, that, based on my argument I said earlier, I, I don't think it has to be a player that is necessary on a winning team. And with the numbers that Goldschmidt put up, I could see myself giving him a vote. But I see the argument on McCutcheon winning for the Pirates. I guess my whole argument is based on Goldschmidt not getting one singular first place vote. A one hop shot to Cabrera, and he throws up. Russell Martin can't hit it much harder, but right at the shortstop. And Jason Lane works a 1 2 3 fifth inning.
Lead four nothing. Time for the Southwest Airlines military spotlight. And our police officers, San Diego's proudest and best here tonight, saluting Old Glory. And of course, on Sunday, all of us will stand and cheer as the U.S. Marine Corps will be honored on Military Sunday here at Petco Park. San Diego's the place. Hope you're making your plans for the weekend, Friday night. Saturday night, baseball night in San Diego. Saturday night, beach towel giveaway. And then Sunday, as always, saluting the military. It's my favorite day, Sundays at Petco. Beautiful. You can't beat it. Great venue, honoring great people, thanking them for their service. Can't beat it. Venable, the only man to put a dent in the offerings of Garrett Cole. He doubled into the right field corner with two outs in the second. Couple of walks, Rivera and Cabrera, and that's been it. Not much base traffic against a hard throwing right hander, 23 year old from UCLA. He was the number one pick overall. It's, he was no surprise. Everyone knew he, he had the major league stuff. So they finished last so many years, and that builds up a lot of first round picks. And we've talked about. Yeah, McCutcheon and Alvarez and Neil Walker. Yep. Garrett Cole. They really stocked the cover, didn't they? So going back the uh, last few years, we'll revisit that. Venable pounds one to the right side with the shift on. Easy play at the second base position. So number one overall. From San Diego State Strasburg. Hopefully, we'll see him this weekend on the mound for the Nationals. Then Bryce Harper. So, Washington back to back with the first pick. And then Cole, three years ago. Carlos Correa, the Astros getting the first pick the last two years and going for two pitchers. Mark Appel from Stanford. And they think it's not long before he's going to be in the big leagues. Chris Bryant was the second selection. And he's been tearing up the minors. Maven. Oh, good play by Alvarez getting to his left and denying a hit. That's the top defensive play of the game. Pedro Alvarez. That's not an easy play. An in between hop, that ball almost looked like it hits the lip of the grass. Hit sharply and quickly up to his feet to fire a strike. Catches it actually behind him. Pro hop. Strike over to first. So two outs on ground outs, Venable and Mabin. Brings up Rene Rivera, walked his only at bat. At the knees, 94 miles an hour. Hasn't bounced many, has he? No, he hasn't. Here comes another one. Oh, he shook off. Fastball away. Broken bat looper back of second. Walker is there for the catch. Another one, two, three inning for Garrett Cole. He's gone through five, allowing one hit.
Hector Alvarez. The shift. Chase Headley on the right side. And then the pitch by Alex Torres is bashed into that shift. And he beats the shift with a hard ground ball. Then he goes to the next one. Again, the shift. Chase Headley is on his right side instead of his natural position at third base. And Alvarez beats the shift again with a hard line drive over the shift. You're seeing it a lot in baseball. Also, Pedro Alvarez, his last time out, being the shift, 3-1 count, fastball deposited into the right field seats. Impressive hitter from the left side. Yeah, you can't put the right fielder up on the first row and make that catch. That's where the shift ends. And Alvarez has been very impressive in the two games, hasn't he? Shift on to the right on the infield, to the left in the outfield. Struck out and lined a home run into the right field jack track last time, number 11. Guys, so many times, I'm sorry, Dick, so many times we talk about the shift, and as a hitter, that, that would actually frustrate me because it would tell me that I that I would say I'm pulling the ball too many times. I'm not hitting it where it's pitched. Yeah, it's that one the opposite way, but it's just an easy fly ball to Seth Smith. One away. And that just goes to show you, Mark. Go right ahead with your thought. No, but you look at it and you, you think of it from the Tony Gwynn perspective. Yes, he he owned that 5.5 hole, but he also hit the ball where it's pitched. If he had to pull it, he'd pull his hands in and, and hit that ball. But it is frustrating if you see some of these hitters that are just being shifted on and you're and you're getting exposed. So that, that would be frustrating. So let's say you're a stud hitter in the lineup, Mark Swing. You stick with your strength and you try to alter something. You don't alter anything. You go to your strength, but. So many of these hitters are now thrown into that pull mode, and yeah. you can see it. You know, I, you look back to Will Venable when he is going well, he's hitting the ball to all fields, and we saw that a lot at the end of the year last year. Now he's being shifted on, and, and you're seeing a lot of pull balls on the right side. Yeah, it's like football. You know, the defense comes up with a uh, five-man front, and they're saying, well. We respect your run more than your pass. We'll we'll sacrifice that. They're telling you what they think your weakness is, or how they can best beat you. And I can see your point. That as a hitter, you look out there and say, "No, I got to do something about this." You would think that would be the thought process. That's exactly right. And I'm using Will Venable as an example, not a, as an excuse. And it's one of those things. You look out there; it's got to be frustrating. You know where they're going to pitch you. It's either hard in or maybe soft. That that's going to make you pull the ball. Ooh, knocked down. Good play by Lane, a former outfielder, and he throws out Travis Snyder, helping himself. Jason Lane has now retired six in a row. Good reactions. Well, Jason doesn't throw that hard, so he's always in a good fielding position. Let's take a look. Left hander goes to swipe, knocks it down. Fires a dart over to first base. That ball was not hit lightly. That ball was smoked. Got it by a half step. So Snyder out on a hard smash back to the box. Here's Jordy Mercer, single, single. And finally, a pop up middle of the diamond. And it's Alonzo calling off the former outfielder, Lane, to make the play. Hey, Lane, seven up, seven down for the veteran left hander.
Four runs and six hits, two of the hits, two run homers by Walker and Alvarez to lead four nothing, and it's time for our Fan Diego fan of the game. Fans of the game properly attired here to root for their home team. As we go to the last of the sixth inning. Jason Lane going to get to hit for himself. That's good. Knows how to handle the lumber. He's a former outfielder. There are his uh, career numbers. High fly ball to right. In two and back a few for Snyder for the first down. Well, one of the most famous players in Major League history to throw left, bat right, Ricky Henderson. Jason Lane falls into that category. Lefty thrower, righty hitter. Don't find too many of them. And Mark Sweeney, what do you think about the former outfielder? Dad, trying to get those hands in to barrel it up. You got to love him pulling his hands in. This guy, as you saw from the career numbers, 61 career home runs. That's good enough for me. Yeah. yeah it is quite rare to get a baseball athlete that that throws left but hits right. Mm -hmm. It's usually the other way around right handers that bat left handed. Back in the day the Jim Palmer era Brooks Robinson era with the. Baltimore Orioles Kurt Bluffery an outfielder very productive player. Left handed thrower right handed hitter. Cabrera walking a strikeout tonight. Tried to steal and was nailed on a perfect throw from Russell Martin. You know, Mark Sweeney, not only does Garrett Cole have that nice little curveball, but he's got good two seam action, too. You see a lot of foul balls around home plate. Very aggressive with the fastball, and he looks like he's under control. They're meshing very well, Russell Martin. And himself, but very impressive down here. It looks like he has a, a great awareness around the mound as well. It's the timing aspect of, of in between pitches, and he's talked to himself a couple of times, been frustrated himself of not executing his pitches, but very impressive young man. Hasn't lost any velocity. That was a 96 mile an hour fastball. His first pitch of the night was 96. Mm -hmm. Trying to go down and away here to Cabrera. You see the Southland Technology Fox tracks. Breaking ball left up. Round ball to the first baseman Ike Davis, and he beats Cabrera to the bag for the second out. Hey, Dick, you know what's coming this Friday? I know. It's June 6th. Park Pot at the park, huh? Yeah, Padres going to face off. The Nationals are going to be in town. 7 10 on Friday, but the party starts early with the second Padres Beer Fest of 2014. Great craft beers from local and national breweries at the park at the park. It all begins at 5. Beat the lines and get your tickets. You get your fryer funds and get a t-shirt early at potteries.com slash beer fest. Cocktails. Yeah, there's a beer vendor there with uh, several choices. Of course here at Fox Sports San Diego and Coors Light is very popular. Two outs, bases empty, and the Padres hungry for some traffic here. Trailing 4-0. Chase Headley. Struck out and flight out. Cole working his pitch count over the 90 mark with a total of six strikeouts. He's walked two. Good slider. Just to underline the the promise that this right hander Cole has. He's just 23, folks. The 
nature to me. Absolutely. With this stuff, tough spot for Headley. If one and two, what are you going to get here? Something off speed, I'm guessing. Listen right. Change up floats outside. Change ups 84 miles an hour. Yep. It's just a couple of miles slower than the fastball of some pitchers. Line to left field. That could be a good one. And it's right on the line into left field. Headley rounds first and puts on the brakes. Harrison with a strong throw. Padres have their second hit. As Headley goes the opposite way. Well, off the bat, it looked like it had double written all over it. But remember, Josh Harrison getting to that ball quickly, and Chase Headley does not have blazing speed. Remember, he's been hitting the knee a couple times last road trip. Knee's probably kind of barking a little bit. He takes an aggressive turn around first base, but retreats back with two outs and hands it over to the next hitter, Seth Smith. The Padres need that big swing, get right back into the game. Smith is struck out and fly to left. How deep into the outfield second baseman Walker is. He's way out there. You know, with the first baseman holding on the runner there, Chase Headley backing up a little bit gives him more range, right? The ball hit to his right or left. He's in near the cut of the grass a little bit more, cuts down that range. Smith loves it here at Petco. 27 games this year, hitting 376. Lines that one through the shift. A sharp single to right field. And Headley coasts into second base. So the Padres, a couple of base runners for the first time tonight. And that'll bring up Yonder Alonso. Hey, Mark Sweeney, I would say that's beating the shift, right? Yeah, what a beautiful swing from Seth Smith. Getting that foot down early, as you can see, the barrel follows through and, and picture perfect swing. That's going to Seth Smith's strength and very impressive. Ray Searage, pitching coach, having a chat with Cole. 98 pitches. Yeah. Third time around for Alonzo, maybe just going over a little bit of a scouting report. Well, that's a good visit by a pitching coach. You figure you got a four nothing lead. You want to make sure everyone's in sync here and focused. You know, one bad pitch and it's a four three game. Not a lot of stressful innings for Garrett Cole. Well, the pitch count is up there, but. Uh, Base runner in the first, base runner in the second, third. And as Dick mentioned earlier, perfect in the fourth and fifth. Yeah, he'd gone 11 outs in a row before the two out single by Headley. Smith follows with a single, and the bullpen busy for the first time for the Buckos. Right hander Jared Hughes heating up for he Pittsburgh. Pitched last night, Hughes did for an inning. Ground ball left side. That's through. Headley around third. They're going to try to score him. Here comes a throw by Harrison, and he's in there. It's four to one as Alonzo delivers. Smith checks in at second. Alonzo with his 19th RBI, and it's a 4-1 game. Well, I think one of the things pitching coach Ray Searage may have said to Cole is that, hey, let's try to pitch him away. He could flare it that way. If he finds a hole, it's only a run. Keep it to a single. And the Padres are on the board there. That's once again, I think, a Padre hitter beating the shift. That's going to be all for Garrett Cole as the tying run comes to the plate in the form of Ted Jerko. Skipper Clint Hurdle takes the ball. Pitching chain for the Pirates with Pittsburgh leading 4-1. to one.
under Alonzo if we go back to his previous at bat. He, he got struck out by a slider. He took a fastball previously in this at bat, but got a slider to strike out on that. Then now he's looking at his next at bat, two outs. He gets a fastball on the outside edge and making the adjustment of committing to hit the ball the other way. Two strike hit, I mean, two out hitting and an RBI. Nice approach by Yonder Alonso getting the Padres back in this game. So three consecutive singles Headley, Smith, and Alonso with two outs here in the sixth. And that Derek's the starter. Garrett Cole, Jared Hughes, just 16 games. He's inherited 12 runners so far this year. None has scored. Jerko trying to tie it with one swing. He's grounded out and struck out. Five and two thirds for Cole. About four hits, three in a row in this sixth inning. Walked a couple and struck out six. And Hughes now comes in and throws that heavy two seam fastball, heavy sinker, along with the slider and the changeup from the right side. Up the middle and backhanded by Walker and throws the first in time. They were shifted over, and that normally a base hit to center field right up the middle, but Walker was over near second, able to backhand and deny. Padres left with only one, four to one Pittsburgh. Two run homer by Neil Walker the opposite way he got the bucks on the board first two nothing in the third and then Pedro Alvarez with a laser to right field for another two run shot four nothing after four the Padres put together three consecutive singles of Garrett Cole who struck out six men on his way to what he hopes to be a sixth win of the year and finally got to him in the sixth inning the walks to hit or hits by Headley Smith and Alonzo producing the run and it's four to one. Cole, a solid start. No trouble until the last inning with two outs. Jesse Hahn, major league debut, three and two thirds. Struck out five. There were moments where you could see the high promise of Hahn. Neil Walker continues his home run hitting, his 11th, and Alvarez, his 11th home run. Charlie Marte will bat for Hughes. He was uh, getting just the one man out and uh, he's gone. I foul that'll drift into the seats off to the right. Pittsburgh bench has been productive this year. They're hitting 280. Last night, three pinch hitters, all three came up with base hits. Snyder, Tabata with singles, and Gabby Sanchez with a double. Men hitting like that says Clint Hurdle. Hey, this isn't an easy job. Just yeah. Get another chunk of chewing gum. <laughs> he can work that gum with the best of them. Yeah, he's good. There's strike three as Marte caught licking. Second strikeout for Jason Lane, veteran just called up from San Antonio. 
and has faced eight men and retired all eight. Well, Darren Balsley told me before the game that he is a strike thrower. That's exactly what we need after last night's game. And he's proven that this evening. And this is really a salvation for the bullpen. Oh, yes. Somebody to come in and rest the tired arms. And if the Padres should muster some offense, they've got Benoit and Street that are mm -hmm. fresh. Harrison, a single in three trips tonight. And he's fooled by the breaking ball. Last six games for Harrison, he's 11 for 26, so over 400. Over but low. Headley right there to throw out Harrison for the second out. He's not only a strike thrower, he's an out thrower. Yeah. As promised earlier in the game, the AT&T fan photo. Tweet your photo to hashtag SD fan photo. A chance to be shown in one of our telecasts brought to you by AT&T. And who's that good looking guy? Well, thank you, Chris, at Sports Brain. Well, who's the brain in that one? Well, you got half a brain in that yeah. picture. <laughs> yeah. Right on. That's right. Well, Sweeney out in front. I'll agree with that. Anytime you go to the University of Maine, you're doing something right. Black Bears, you know, you get out, the, yeah. out of their way. Neil Walker, two-run homer back in the third. And they've got the Pirates off to a 2-0 lead against Jesse Hahn. One and one. What a story. 37 years of age, an outfielder for several seasons in the big leagues, six of them. Balls it away. That'll be back out of play. Tonight's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching all over the place in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. Welcome and thank you, thank you, thank you. For your service. Taste of home. We wish we could serve you a chunk of apple pie yeah. and a kiss from your mom. We appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm sure uh, watching from afar, fans that have followed the Pirates all their life and the Padres have their rooting interest. And uh, for the rest, you just love baseball. It's, uh, it's America's pastime. Mm -hmm. Count stays at two and two to Walker. Don Roach sent to El Paso in the move to bring Jason Lane up and uh, Eric Stoltz a uh, death in the family so he's on bereavement. Should be back by the weekend. Swing and a miss strike three ten in a row retired by Jason Lane. Hubba hubba. <laughs>
Oscar Alonso had the RBI single as the Padres trail it 4-1 here in the bottom of the second. Quick update on Andrew Kashner following that simulated game that he threw yesterday. He said no pain, feeling well, which means tomorrow we'll throw a bullpen. If all is good, no pain or any soreness in the elbow. Buddy Black said he will start this weekend. If he does, that would probably be on Saturday. That would give time Eric Stoltz to get back from his grandmother's funeral and for Stoltz to start this weekend as well. So, again, Kashner will throw a bullpen tomorrow. Hope all is well and we'll be able to see him back out here at Petco against the Nationals this weekend, guys. Yeah, that's good news, Chris. And uh, for fans that are making plans for baseball on the weekend, Saturday baseball night in San Diego. And Big uh, giveaway of the beach towels and then get to see Andrew Kashner on the mound as well. That makes it a delicious ticket. Kristen Orfia will face the new relief pitcher Tony Watson, who's on a scoreless string of 16 and two thirds without a run against his left handed offerings. 5 0 record as a relief pitcher. Starling Marte stays in the game in left field and will stay in that ninth spot in the batting order. Then Orfia takes strike one. What a job by Jason Lane. Ten men face, ten outs recorded. He's fooling him, wasn't he? Off speed, staying out of the heart of the plate, flipping up some breaky balls there. Fun to watch. One and one to Dino. Foul back. Denorfia, then Maven and Rivera in the Padre seven. They're keeping score, put the pitcher Watson in the leadoff spot. Fouled out of play. There's a happy <laughs> young Padre fan. Some great seats too. Well, it looked like they were in the uh, Barca lounger. Look at those chairs. Yeah. Oh, those are the special. You need to take a. Take a nap at those. Huh? Yeah. Stay there for the night. Got the big screen TV right there, plus the action live right in front of them. Part of the attendance tonight just announced 20,520 at Petco. Dino, fond memories of his debut in the major leagues. His first hit was a home run against Pittsburgh back in 2005. By the mound, Mercer there. One away. Time now for the Bill Howe plays of the game featuring Pedro Alvarez. A close line home run to right field. And the Jack deck with a man on to make it 4 nothing, And then taking a hit away defensively from Cameron Maben. Well done. Pedro Alvarez, our Bill Howe plays of the game. One out now here in the seventh, and Cameron Maben struck out and had that potential hit denied by Alvarez. That's the last time up. Tony Watson's got a live arm to that left side. Get up to 95. Hmm. Heat there. No, he actually pulled the string. 85. Jason Grilly back from the injured list is the veteran closer for the Bucks. Two and one. Watson just turned 29 uh, last week. Kevin Quackenbush looks like he's hot, ready to go. 
And three and one to Maven. Padres need base runners. Trailing 4 1 here in the bottom of the seventh. Ball four. That's a start. Maven aboard on the walk. And Rivera the better. Well, Scott Miller will be on Fox Sports San Diego tomorrow, and it's a hot topic. Our MLB insider will discuss Tommy Medica's appeal for that single in Arizona to complete the cycle. We'll get an expert's thoughts. He's done all the interviews. A move by Medica's agent that uh, surprised a lot of people. We'll see what Scott Miller has found out. Rivera didn't get it all. Fly ball shallow and left. A long run from Marte. He's got great speed. Two away. And Jason Lane spot comes up. And we have a pinch hitter for Lane. Carlos Quinton. So Lane, a tip of the Padre cap to the uh, the 37 year old that comes out of uh, Double A ball. Rescue the bullpen. He deserves the handshakes. Three and a third innings. Perfect for Lane. Ten straight outs. What a great effort by the left hander. Struck out three. Perfect relief outing. That's exactly what the Padres hoped they'd get. Well, that's got to be a great feeling for Jason. Carlos Quinton. Carries the power to the plate. A couple of home runs so far in his limited duty. Started last night. Was hit by a pitch and walked, went over three. Well, you can do it to left handers, but why not do it to right handers? Carlos Quentin, the ship is on. He right says field can't corner. Do it. Yeah, that's right. right. Sure. Turnabout's fair play. Right field corner wide open. Well, he doesn't hit many down there. And he checks swing strike. Quinton's been perfect as a pinch hitter, three for three. And he goes to right field, but foul. And two of the three hits home runs. Now that's really coming off the bench and producing instant of offense. Yeah. Congratulations, good catch. A ball, two strikes. Maven with two outs at first base. Good. Quinton keep it going here in the bottom of the seventh. Back to the top of the order. Everett Cabrera. Strike three call. Caught the bottom of the strike zone. Borderline pitch goes to the pitcher Tony Watson.
Good evening. Mark and I are working on Padres Live, the post-game show brought to you by Cox Communications. Obviously, got to get a little offense going, but in the meantime, nice to see Jason Lane get some work in and be very effective. What a great story because 10 hitters that he faced, he came in, and this is a great moment for him because of the perseverance and what he put into the game of baseball. It has to probably mean more with his call-up this time than it was the first time. When we see you in a post-game show, we'll have much more on Jason's reascent to the big leagues. It really is a wonderful story. We'll have that in the post-game show. You'll also hear from the manager, Buddy Black, and we have a preview of SD Live, which will follow us immediately after the post-game show. Tyson Ross joins us, and also Super Agent Lee Steinberg, his thoughts on all things, including Ryan Leaf. You do a great Remember job that? on that show. Absolutely. We'll see you after the final out. Guys. All right, gentlemen, looking forward to it. Always a great job. Emmy Award winning. Kevin Quackenbush. So, and Andrew uh, McCutcheon to start the eighth inning for Pittsburgh. Quackenbush now 11 appearances. 162 batting average against the sinker bowler. Yeah, the quack attack was out there last night, only a third of an inning. Soft liner right to Alonzo, one away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. One out is uh, Kristen Norfia has replaced uh, Venable in right field. Ike Davis the batter shift is on as Headley moves from third base over to the second base side. Cabrera stays on the left side of the infield. Davis has grounded out twice and struck out. Ninety on the fastball inside. Well, the Padres have done a good job against McCutcheon in the series. He did last time up last night. Uh, club a RBI double, but was uh, one for five last night. Another looper. This one is Cabrera's ball, two away. And McCutcheon over three tonight. Well, tomorrow day game, three thirty for Fox Sports San Diego, and the. Number five strikeout pitcher in the National League, Ian Kennedy, with 81 strikeouts. Will be on the mound looking for his fifth win of the year against Francisco Liriano, who was the surprise southpaw for the Pirates last year, but this year one and five, and we understand there will be a pregame show, so we'll be on the air at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Kennedy pitching much better than his four and six record. I thought he was. At his very best the last time out. He was excellent. Russell Martin. Deep to short. Long throw Cabrera in time for the out. Oh, that was quick. Quackenbush, three up, three down on just a handful of pitches. Ball brought to you by Southwest Airlines. 
Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By Petco, the power of together. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Beautiful night, Petco Park, 20,520. Pirates lead 4-1 to one as we go to the last of the eighth inning. And the new pitcher is Mark Polanson for the Pirates. Right-hander allowing opposing hitters only a 192 average. Yeah, he's a good one, and he could close. In fact, he closed for a while while Jason Grilly was on the bend. Comes right at you. He's only surrendered to one home run in 27 innings. And when you take a look at the stuff from Melanson, cut fastball, a lot of cutters, they'll throw the fastball once in a while, curveball, and a changeup. Low to mid 90s on that fastball. The right hander from Colorado, Denver area, growing up. 29 years of age. He's a strikeout pitcher, too. Struck out eight batters in his last six games. That's over six innings for the right hander. Last year, 71 innings, 70 strikeouts. So strikeout burning, basically. Cabrera walk, a strikeout, and a ground up. Needs to set the table here for the Padres. His time running short. Chopped off home plate. Melanson hops off the mound and gets the out himself. A little bump there. Nothing serious. Sometimes it's a contact sport. Well, Melanson, he goes over. He just wants to play the tag. Like Cabrera was trying to rip the ball out of his glove. At least jar it free, but no luck. Yeah, Melanson had the ball in his glove, two hands, and um, you know, I just I don't know if there's any intent by any one of those players right there. Just running down the line. Although Cabrera didn't really break stride, he just kept going at the same pace, right? That's what made it look like maybe a collision. Headley trying to get a base hit on the bunt to the left side, but it goes foul. Alvarez playing over near second base, a long way to go to try to get that one. Now, this is a time where that's not a bad play, actually, as we look at the keys to the game. Yeah, let's revisit them. Get on the Cole heater, Garrett Cole. For the right hander, five and two thirds. He only surrendered four hits, one earned run. He struck out six. And Han, Jesse Han's got to keep him close. He went three and two thirds in his major league debut. Four earned runs and struck out five. Just two bad pitches, two yeah. home runs, both with a man aboard to count for all four runs against him as the Bucks lead 4 1. We saw some nice things though, right? Mm -hmm. From Jesse Hunt. Yes. And he squares again, trying to work Alvarez. But uh, Pedro, again, is only about 15 feet from the second base bag. And this is a case where the shift's on. You know, a home run would be great, but a base runner is okay. Yep. It's all right to give yourself up. Now Alvarez cheating a little more toward third base. Headley's hit was to left field, and he scored the only Padre run. Two outs in the sixth, single to left. Smith lined a single to right, and Alonzo grounded a single through the left side for the Padre run. That was off starter Garrett Cole, and the Alonzo hit was the last pitch for Cole. As the tying run, Jerko came to the plate. They brought in Jared Hughes, and he got Jerko to ground out the deep second. That was a frustrating play for the Padres. Looked as if that was going to be the fourth consecutive hit. Jerko hit it right through the pitcher's leg, out over yeah. second base, and Walker was there. And it shifted over close to second. Normally, that ball's into center field. Rec three says plate umpire Alan Porter. 
first strikeout for Melanson. Well, let's look at the National League All Star balloting. We, look, we checked the American League last night. At this moment, Blackman of Colorado, Puig of the Dodgers, Stanton of Miami would be the outfield. Arenado and Tulowitzki, that figures the left side of the Colorado Lint infield. Chase Utley having a fine year, the Philly veteran. Adrian Gonzalez is the leader at first base. Yadier Molina behind the plate. Pretty good team, huh? Mm -hmm. Look at how young that outfield is, though. Yeah. And how about the Rockies dominating right there, even though Arenado was hurt. Short, third, left. Swing and a miss by Seth Smith, who has struck out, flight out, and singled. Shift on for Smith. One and one. I'll tell you what, as a kid growing up playing Little League, I could not wait for the All-Star game. Me too. I can remember the first one that I heard on the radio. 1946, I, my family was on our way from the San Fernando Valley. The war was over. We were going to go back to Michigan where my mother was born and Minnesota where my dad was from. And listening to Ted Williams hit two home runs in that 1946 All-Star game. Where was that game? Played, that was Dick? the blooper pitch. You oh, know, the Ethos pitch. Yeah, yeah. rips the wall, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, he homered off that. Never had given up a homer right at that time in that season. <laughs> Williams said, "That's meat. Can't throw me one of those <laughs> little softball tosses." Do you remember where that game was I played? I don't. I don't we remember. We look that up. Sure. One and two to Smith. Weak wave and a miss, and Smith is gone. Boy, Melanson, a impressive eighth inning. Pitcher unassisted and two strikeouts. Well, a reminder, fans, that Saturday night, baseball night in San Diego, and every fan in attendance against the Nationals on Saturday, a free Padres beach towel, a handsome towel, plenty of material. That's a good size, brought to you by Toyota and supported by Rock 105.3. Padres and Nationals, a 7-10 game. Get your tickets at Padres.com. It'll be a big Saturday night. Look how big that towel is. <laughs> Hey, nobody's perfect. <laughs> it's huge. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think, Love uh, the swing and fire. That should bring out a sellout crowd, don't you think? Makes a great game. And maybe Andrew Cashman. Huh? That's right. Houston Street has uh, not seen a lot of work, so Bud Black wants to keep him sharp. He hasn't pitched since the Saturday 4 2 win at Chicago against the White Sox when he recorded his 17th save and 17 tries. He'll face Alvarez, Snyder, and Mercer on top of the ninth with the Bucks leading 4 1. And look follow up their 10 3 win last night. Look at that, Dick. We got the shift working again. Pedro Alvarez, Mark Sweeney talked about it earlier. He's beaten it twice. 
Last night drove it through twice for singles and he beat it tonight. No shift would have stopped him a home run. Alonzo off the bag and a quick put out. 3 1. That's now 14 straight retired by Padre pitching. The last base runner was a single with two outs back in the fourth inning off the bat of Josh Harrison. And then uh, Jason Lane came in, retired 10 in a row. Quackenbush got all three men he faced, and now Street retires Alvarez on the first pitch. Travis Snyder 0 for 3. Struck out. Rounded the second. A smash back to the mound. That was taken care of by Jason Lane. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, last call for the Padres, Alonzo Jerko and Denorfia scheduled. There's the closer, Jason Grilly, for the Bucks. Round ball right at Jerko. Two quick outs for Houston Street. Again, Saturday, a full day of baseball action, beginning with the Indians and the Rangers on Fox Sports 1. Then it's baseball night in America on Fox as the Yankees square off against the Royals. MLB doubleheader begins Saturday at noon here Pacific time on Fox Sports 1 and continues at 4 p.m. Pacific on Fox. And then at 6.30 here on Fox Sports San Diego, the second game of the Padres Washington National Series. So a big triple header of baseball yeah. action on Fox. Can't get enough. And to think how far we have come. Remember when it was just the game of the week and how you... You should just look for it on Monday after you know after football. Oh, that was in the off season. But I remember Bud Black, well, Bud, Bud, Bud Blattner and uh, Leo DeRocher, yeah. Dizzy Dean, all in the action. Black and white. In the days of Pabst Blue Ribbon yeah. Beer. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Strike three. Mercer. Wow. Fifteen in a row retired by Padre Pitch. Time for our Carl's Jr. star of the game, 37 year old Jason Lane. Back in the bigs as a pitcher for the first time and makes quite an impression. 10 up, 10 down, a perfect three and a third innings for Jason Lane. Welcome back to the majors. He's our Carl's Jr. star of the game. What a great job he did keeping him off balance. He threw a perfect game for three and a third. Deserve it of the handshakes all around in that Padre dugout. Well, here comes the closer for the Pittsburgh Pirates, Jason Grilly. He last was on the mound Sunday night at Dodger Stadium as he saved the win against the Dodgers. The Pirates took three out of four from LA and three outs away from two more wins against the Padres. It's been a good road trip for them. They're five and three on this trip. Grilly will throw a home run ball now and then. 
He's saved eight. Four for four his last four attempts and Yonder Alonso will start it for the Padres. Alonso an RBI single knocked in the Padres only run in the sixth it was the third single in a row for San Diego and knocked uh, Garrett Cole out of the game. Strike one. What makes uh, Grilly tough. Well he he tax the zone. He throws a fastball slider and a changeup. Once again not overpowering. But he comes right after you. He's made quite a career being a bucko and being a closer. Bounced around quite a bit early in his career. He's into his eighth year at the big league level. He's a good one. Yeah, nickname Hibachi. Little grill. <laughs> really. I like it. <laughs> Yonder Alonso. Jerko and Denorfia try to drum up some business here in the bottom of the ninth. Out of play. And he truly is a pirate, Jason Grilly. He is. Yes, he went to Seton Hall. Very good. And uh, now he dons the black and gold as a big leaguer. Meant to be. And be sure to stay tuned after this one, after the Padres come back and win it. Padres Live postgame show. Mike Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney. Gonna break it down for you. A lot of love tonight. <laughs> Padres with four hits, a double by Venable, and then the three singles back to back to back in the sixth inning with two outs. Headley singled, Smith singled, Alonso ground single through the left side to drive in the only run. Nothing against the bullpen of the Pirates. Except the walk by Maven. Swing and a miss, really, with a changeup. Great arm action from Jason Grilly on this changeup. That holds it like a circle change, two middle fingers, and great movement. Way out in front of it. He saved 33 games last year. Really wasn't a closer at full time till last season. He was just a, you know, the sixth and seventh inning reliever. Pretty good breaking ball there. He went around, did Churko. And that's the pitch that has just been his Achilles, that breaking ball off the plate outside. Jerko a couple of ground outs to second and a strikeout tonight. And 0 and 2 really quickly in front. Jason really spent a year on the shelf. You know, a lot of times guys are put on the shelf because of the Tommy John surgery. Well, his case was a right knee reconstruction. That was back in 2010. He got back healthy in 2011, signed as a free agent with the Pirates, and he's been there ever since. I love to hear guys battling back from injuries, you know. These guys are hopeful. They got the rally caps. Padres need some rally shillelaghs. Well, that's what makes uh, Jason Lane's story so great. You know, not giving up the dream. Yeah. You love the game. You don't want to quit. You want to play. You love the uniform. That's too good to take. Strike three. Really punches out Alonso and Jerko. And the Padres down to their final out. Kristen Orfia. Well, this is pinpoint control. Outside corner, knee high. It's a tough pitch. It Perfect is. Pitch. Not much. Not much that even the great hitters can do with that pitch. No. There. If Maybe you flare throw, it the opposite if way. If you could have thrown every pitch right there, you'd be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> or so you'd be in some Hall of Fame. Yeah. And if a strike Joliet. was down the way. I'd be in the Hall of Fame. Bouncer to second off the bat at Denorfia. Walker throws him out, and the ball game is over. The Pirates pitching dominates again. They win it tonight, four to one. Let's go to Mike Pomerantz.
Coming up in the post-game show, we're going to talk about Jesse Hahn's major league debut and also Jason Lane, his big league debut as a pitcher. A lot to talk about there. You're going to hear from Buddy Black, and we're going to have a preview of tonight's SD Live featuring Tyson Ross and Super Agent Lee Steinberg. 